Hello everyone and welcome. In this video, I'm gonna be just giving a casual update of some things that are going on with the channel. Now, I'm gonna split this video up into three parts and I'll have timestamps in the video description. So if you're here for a specific reason, uh, check the video description and I'll have timestamps for each of those things. So the three things that I'm gonna be talking about uh, first off, starting with Project Integra, then talking about car reviews, and then talking about an event I attended up in Washington where I drove 27 trucks and SUVs and kind of what my plans are uh, for, that, for that trip uh, as far as what I'm planning to bring out of it as far as videos. Now, starting with Project Integra, and I, and I get this question pretty much every video without fail, someone comments, Project Integra, question mark? And, and I pretty much answer it every time, so it's not like, uh, you know, I'm saying don't ask this question, that's fine, uh, but, you know, if, if nothing has changed for six months, then nothing has changed for six months. Um, and it's unfortunate, yes, I agree. So basically what's going on with Project Integra? Well, I still have my Integra, uh, it still exists. Um, oh, and let me just mention, I'm in the Subaru BRZ uh, Series Blue right now. And so there's a thousand of these for the US market, uh, and I'm testing it out this week, and I'll include a link in the video description as well for the review of this vehicle. It's actually a lot of fun, uh, so you may wanna check that out as well. But on to Project Integra, I still do have it, uh, and I still also have parts for it. So I've got a throttle body, I've got an intake manifold, I've got a exhaust uh, header, I also have some camber parts, uh, and I also bought some hardware recently so I could actually install the camber kit because it does have a little too much positive uh, or negative camber rather. So I would like to correct that. Um, and so I do have plans to you know, update Project Integra and do some more things with it. Uh, the only thing that happens is you know, I'm only one person. And so whenever something comes up, an event comes up uh, where I get invited to do something uh, and I think the opportunity sounds cool and I think it's worthwhile and I think I could provide unique content by, uh, you know, partaking in this opportunity, I do it. And, you know, it, it'd be crazy not to. And so what usually takes the hit first is Project Integra just because those videos are so time intensive to make. And so because, uh, you know, they take so much time to make and they take a lot of planning and then, you know, it's out in my garage, which is separate from my apartment. And it just takes an, an immense amount of time to do these videos. Not that I'm complaining. I'm certainly not. I like doing them uh, and I hope to do more of them eventually. But all I'm saying is when something takes a hit, it's just easiest for me to put it on Project Integra and delay that rather than delay something else. Because every Wednesday I'm putting out a video regardless and I'm trying to start doing videos more often on Sundays as well. The only thing I'm promising is Wednesday that there'll be some sort of explanation, but other than that, I do try to get out a video on Sunday as well. Okay, moving on to the next subject, and that's car reviews. Uh, and this is something that isn't all that new to my channel. I've been doing it since September of 2014, uh, but I've been getting some questions about it. Uh, and some people saying that they like the old engineering explained, uh, which then I think back to like when I had like an even worse haircut and audio and video was terrible quality. Uh, and yeah, it was just awkward. Um, so I don't know, I guess the old engineering explained doesn't look that appealing to me. But uh, what I also don't get about that is that I really haven't changed the structure of my YouTube channel. Basically, every Wednesday, I release a video that's pretty much going to teach you something about how cars work in some form or another. That's really never changed, and I do that every single Wednesday. The only thing that has changed is I put out more videos now uh, since I've quit my full-time job, uh, which I was a test engineer for a forklift company, and I'm no longer doing that, and so now I have more time. And so I've added in these car reviews, uh, and so I've been trying to get them posted uh, every Sunday. And I don't always do that because I don't have, always have a car to review, but it has been something that I've been trying to do, and that's kind of been my goal, is that once a week I'll put one out. And so how this works is I get a car in for the week uh, and then I test it during that week and then I make my review. Uh, and hopefully, you know, there's some value in that review as I kind of have a different perspective of vehicles, I think, than some of the journalists out there. Uh, not that they're wrong or right or better or worse. Uh, it's just all about different perspectives. And so I think it's worthwhile. Uh, and so on that topic, you know, there's a lot of reasons why I do car reviews and it's not just purely for the review itself. I actually learn a lot from getting these cars in 
And some good examples of that are when I have uh, vehicles in with the CVT, which everyone loves to hate on CVT transmissions, whether or not that makes sense. Uh, and what's cool about CVT transmissions is they actually shift a lot better with paddle shifters when you have this, uh, you know, pseudo uh, shifting system with pre-selected gears with the CVT. It actually does it a lot better than pretty much all of the automatic planetary gearboxes that I've tried out. And I never would have known that if I hadn't have driven them. You know, it's just something that you need to feel and experience for yourself. The other thing is like with uh, cylinder deactivation, and I was just in the Cadillac Escalade, that vehicle, you know, I never, I know how cylinder deactivation works, but I don't know how smooth of an operation it is, when it occurs, um, if you can tell that it's happening, if you have a noticeable loss in power when you put your foot down. And it was actually a very seamless system, and I found that out through testing the Cadillac Escalade. And so one of the things this does, by me having experience in all these different cars, is that I have a lot more knowledge about all of, you know, the automotive industry as a whole. There's technology that's coming out. Uh, and I get to feel how it works. You know, it's it's one thing to read about it, but it's another thing to actually feel it, experience it, and then it gives you a better base uh, to communicate about it. And so when I have people asking me comments, and this is something you know I take very seriously, I like to respond to everyone's questions and comments. Uh, having the experience of driving all these vehicles gives me a lot more knowledge to answer your questions. And so it's it's been really helpful from that perspective as well. So it's not just hey I'm. Putting out car reviews. And then one other small thing that I think is a little crazy because um, I just wouldn't have guessed that people thought this, but I don't get paid to review these vehicles. Uh, none of the manufacturers are paying me to do this. They just give me a car for a week and I can do whatever I want with it. And so I have the car for a week and I test it out and I post my review. Uh, there's no transaction that occurs where they say, hey, we'll give you $2,000 to say that you like the Subaru BRZ. If I tell you that I like a vehicle, it's legitimately because I like a vehicle. And if a manufacturer doesn't like what I say, then they can stop lending me vehicles. I mean, that's how this system works. And when that happens, fine, you know, so be it. I won't review that manufacturer anymore, but I'm not gonna change that, uh, you know, I'm gonna be honest about how I feel about it. And aside from that, I'm not getting paid. So it's not like there's some, you know, I'm not some sellout that's just, oh, he went and did car reviews. like. I get a lot of value out of these car reviews. There's a lot of technology that I get to look at. I get to learn about all these different types of suspensions and see how they work with my own eyes and you know take the time to look at them. And so it's actually really cool for me and really beneficial to my channel and learning about engineering to have these vehicles in. Uh, it's not just about that one review on Sunday. But I do put a lot of work into getting that review on Sunday uh, so that there is something that you can watch that hopefully provides value and a lot of insight about that car and you know how it's different from others and actually how it feels different from others. So I just wanted to clear that up. Car reviews, I hope they're not going anywhere. And then one final thing is like, you know, growing up, I read Motor Trend, and I still get Motor Trend magazine, uh, and it was kind of always like, you know, one of those dreams where like, oh yeah, I'd love to review cars, but how's that ever going to happen? And here it is, you know, it's happening. I'm in my 20s, and I'm getting sweet cars to drive in, uh, and it's, it's phenomenal. I love doing it. So why would I not do it? I mean, that just seems crazy. So yeah, I don't plan on stopping this. I hope more manufacturers get on board, and I hope to kind of you know, create a more diverse environment of vehicles rather than, you know, some of the planar vehicles that I have been getting. But, you know, for example, I've got this uh, Subaru BRZ Series Blue that I'm in right now, only a thousand in America. Uh, this is one of 500 that's white. And so that's pretty cool, you know, so things are definitely improving. I am getting some cool vehicles in. And, you know, I'm just going to put forth the same amount of effort I always have been into the reviews and my channel and, you know, try and just make it as good as possible. And I hope you guys enjoy it. And if you don't enjoy the car reviews, like, no worries. There's a video every Wednesday uh, about how something works in some form. And actually, you know, sometimes more often than that. So I, ha I went and traveled to uh, Sebring and watched Nissan test out their LMP1 car. And so three Fridays in a row, I posted videos from that. And that's kind of, you know, an engineering insight. It's not just a car review. So it's it's not at all a focus of my channel. Uh, and it's just something that I kind of have been working in. I really enjoy doing it. I learn a lot from it and I think it's worthwhile. So I'm going to continue to do it. Okay, now the final thing that I wanted to talk about in this update was this event that I attended up in Washington, and it's kind of a mouthful. It's called the Northwest Automotive Press Association, which I'm a member of. Uh, it's their Outdoor Activity Vehicle of the Year. 
So NWAPA, Outdoor Activity Vehicle of the Year. And basically what it was is they had 27 vehicles, all of them with four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive, all SUVs and trucks, and a bunch of journalists in the Northwest got together and tested them out to determine which we thought were the best in the different categories. So they had six different categories. Uh, these were um, CUVs, premium CUVs, SUVs, premium SUVs, pickup trucks, and then extreme capability. So there were six categories, uh, and basically, we were to evaluate the cars within each of those six categories, compare them with each other, and then choose which we thought was the best in each category, and then choose which we thought was the best overall. And so what uh, basically I plan on doing with this is kind of this Netflix style release where starting on May 25th, which is Memorial Day, I will release the first category, so that'll be the CUVs. Then May 26th will be the second category, the premium CUVs, uh, and then so on. And so over six days, basically over one week, I'll release all 27 videos that I made uh, from each of these cars. And so what I did with each of these videos, and I think it's pretty cool because it's not necessarily something I can do with all the vehicles that I get in for full review, is that uh, we had an airstrip, an abandoned airstrip that we could test them on. So we did a little park testing, uh, we did a little slalom testing, uh, and then we did some braking testing with some cone set up so you could see the distances. And so that was day one. Uh, and then on day two, we took it on off-road courses. So everything went on the off-road course except for two vehicles. Um, those were the BMW X5 and X6M, which have 4.4 liter twin, twin scroll turbochargers, uh, 567 horsepower, thing was a monster, 4.4 liter V8, uh, crazy fast car, um, and it was on summer tires, so they didn't want it going off-road. So we didn't do that, but all the other ones did go off-road. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of uh, value in these videos as far as, you know, learning the limits of the vehicles and then seeing whether or not they're capable off-road. So there was kind of a light off-road course, but I say light, it still had some pretty deep water in sections uh, that we got to bring them through. And so, uh, and I'm going to do this with all of the vehicles. So with the 27 vehicles, I had my GoPro strapped on my head day one, and then I slapped it on the side window for day two uh, out in the mud. And so I'm planning to just release these videos each day. So it'll be about five videos uh, each day. And then the last day, Saturday, will be two. There was only two competing in the street, the extreme capability category, which was, uh, that was the... Ram Power Wagon and the Toyota 4Runner uh, TRD Pro. So those were some fun vehicles for sure, uh, and those will be on the last day Saturday, uh, which I will release them. That'll be the 30th. So I just wanted to let you guys know that that was coming up. Uh, this is certainly something new for my channel, you know, kind of just experimenting, but I got invited to this event and I thought, you know, what the heck, I'm going to drive 27 vehicles, I'm going to actually get to compare them back to back on the same day, and so why not make a video of each while I'm there, so that's what I did. And the other thing that I did is actually, you know, because I guess because I'm an engineer and I like to analyze everything, uh, I took all of the vehicles and I made a spreadsheet and I put down what I thought was the most important for consumers uh, in purchasing an SUV, and then I compared them with each other. So in each of the videos, I tell you the, the pros and cons of each vehicle versus the others in its category. So if one of them you know, has significantly more fuel economy or more cargo space or more ground clearance, uh, then I let you know about it. And so, or towing capacity, things like that, things that seem important for SUVs. Uh, I did a direct comparison so that you can actually, you you know, learn, hey, this one's better in these categories, worse in these categories. This one's practical but fun. This one's fun but not practical. Things like that. So I think there's going to be a good amount of value in that. Uh, and I hope to see uh, you guys watching those and let me know what you think of them once they do come out um, because I'm going to get invited to several more events like this throughout the year. There's another one which I'll be going to which will have green cars, kind of like uh, you know eco-friendly things. Uh, and I'm excited about that to test out some electric vehicles and things like that, hybrids. I haven't had many in for full review, uh, so I don't know, necessarily know how they behave. And then also another one which I'm very excited about, which is primarily going to be uh, sports cars, 
and that's going to be awesome. I saw pictures from last year's event, and it was totally crazy. They had, like, the BMW i8 and Viper and stuff like that. So that one I know for sure, you know, I, I need to break out the cameras and get some good footage and talk about these different vehicles. Uh, but I'm curious to know your thoughts on it. So once they are released, you know, let me know what you think of them, how I can improve them, uh, if you do like them. Some of them, you know, the problem is that... Uh, some of them, they can be a little bit shaky because I have my GoPro on my head and I'm trying to think, you know, if there's better methods. The reason I did that was because it was very fast to record that way uh, on my end. I didn't have to worry about setting up cameras and these events, you know, you don't have a ton of time with each vehicle. So you want to you move very quickly and be as efficient as possible. So that's what I did so I could spend more time thinking about the car rather than my camera setup. Uh, and then the other thing is, the second day it was raining, so I was wearing a rain jacket, and you can kind of hear it a little bit in the audio uh, for the off-road portion, so hopefully that's not too annoying. You can definitely still hear my voice just fine. Uh, but other than that, I think they turned out really well. I've spent a lot of time editing them and putting together something that I thought you know had legitimate value that you can learn about these vehicles and their capabilities off-road. So just be looking for that. Uh, so I appreciate you watching this channel update. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, as always, feel free to leave them below. And I am going to go tear it up in the BRZ.